So you got a bad haircut and I feel bad for you. I'm sorry that you had that experience. What do you do? I get so many questions and comments. Steven, I went to a you know, stylist and I wanted this and she buzzed my head. Or Steven, I, I went to my barber and I showed him a picture of this and he gave me that. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, I have no control over how someone else cuts your hair. I'm gonna just say that right off the bat because a lot of you ask me you know, what to say specifically to, to your stylist, what to say specifically to your barber, and I try to communicate that with you. It doesn't mean that if you say that to your professional that they're gonna be able to do it right. It's, it's one of those things. That's why sometimes I feel paying a higher price point, you may get better results. If you're going to a barber shop, getting, you know, getting a haircut that's, or not even a barber shop, like <clears throat> one of those like walk-in chain salons that are charging $12 a haircut, and they spend 15 minutes on your hair, you know, meanwhile, while I'm charging, you know, over almost $200 for haircuts, and I'm spending at least an hour with my clients. So there's kind of a big difference. Doesn't mean you have to go pay that, but, you know, so a lot of the times what you need to do is, and I've said this before, make sure you do research on who is cutting your hair. If you've been going to that person for quite some time, for many years, it's really important you show them photos and, and again, use guidelines and, and key points. Like, I want the length down to here, or I want the length on the side down to here. So, and then when they comb it down, you can say, oh, just you know, ask them questions when they're cutting. So like, oh, so you're gonna cut it right around the ear? That's the length, right? Perfect, perfect. Give them key signals that they're doing what you want them to do. A lot of times I've seen, even my own experiences with watching other stylists, they start to do something that I know is gonna be a disaster, and the client just sits there and doesn't say anything, and then they end up being very unhappy. There are times where I do see where the clients are, un are very unhappy and they communicate that, and it's usually like an all-out brawl. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of arguing back and forth, and I I've seen it get really, really ugly. But the key is to make sure that you're trying your best to communicate what you want. Yes, show them photos, but really accentuate key points of the haircut and key indicators of like, you know, you want to grow your hair so it's down to here in the front and then it angles right to about the middle of the ear. Sometimes the way people communicate and the way they, they kind of take in that information is different than somebody else. They ne may need to see a visual. Like if somebody points their hair to me, I'm like, they go, I want it right here. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna cut it right to here. The reason is because they showed me exactly where they want it or I want the front to the tip of my nose. If they don't do that, <clears throat> then maybe it's time you find somebody else. It's, it's one of those things, you gotta bounce around, you gotta find, and I know I have, you know, all of you are from around, all over the world. So I have, I have people that are, you know, like in India, for example, like I love Indian culture, and I've seen a lot of videos where people are going to these street barbers in India paying like, I don't even know, like five rupees or something, or 10 rupees for a haircut or something like that, and they're getting it done in the street. And I see them actually do a great job. But, you know, maybe one of those things where they're not used to looking at photos or they don't know how to cut hair a certain way. They're only really good at one certain thing. That's where maybe you have to go to a salon. I know budgeting is really, really a factor in a lot of this. Like, do you have 50 bucks? Do you have 100 bucks to spend on your haircut? That's really what it comes down to. You know, taking matters into your own hand, meaning like try to haircut on yourself, I don't always suggest that because it's really hard to cut certain areas, especially if you're trying to go for a longer style. Another thing you can do, like for example, somebody recently said, oh, I asked for whatever, an undercut, and she buzzed my entire head with like a number two. I don't know how the hell someone could even do that, but if that's the case, that's the, there's nothing you can do about it. It's not like you can take the hair off the ground and put it back on your head. You just have to let it grow out and go through those pain points and maybe, you know, as it grows out on top, continue to cut the side shorter, you know, just something that is gonna make your hair look good even though it was the wrong hair, haircut that you got. Lastly, try different hair styling options. For example, if you've, you've been parting your hair on this side here the whole time for the last five, six years, and it goes over this way, and you get a bad haircut, it just doesn't look right, well try going the opposite direction or try styling it completely different and it may end up camouflaging or helping the haircut look better right, than what you had, because I know, again, it could be a disaster walking around with a bad haircut. So let me know in the comments below if you've had a bad haircut, if, if you find this information helpful. Tell me if you, if you do communicate with your barber. Have you ever had any good experiences? Were you shown 
a video or a picture of me or you know this look you want to your professional and they just nailed it. I'd love to know that too because it's good for me to know that there are professionals out there that are doing great work. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for more videos with Islandi.